Hello, my name is Dustin Kirkland. I'm a product manager at Google, and I'm joined here by Lucas Heinrich. He's a physicist at CERN and has some pretty exciting uh, experiment that he reproduced using cloud technology, and he's going to tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so during the uh, keynote, we uh, rediscovered the Higgs boson using a publicly available data set. And uh, during the keynote, we launched 25,000 workloads on the public cloud to analyze uh, collision data of the Large Hadron Collider. And uh, there we selected events where we uh, had a pretty good chance that a Higgs boson was originally there. And uh, during the keynote, you could see a chart building up where in the middle of the chart, there was a small peak forming. And that peak uh, more or less uh, proved the existence of the Higgs boson. It's fascinating. So you work on the Atlas project. And with the Atlas project, you were working on some data from CERN, and I understand this uh, has some parallels to what we do in the open source community. Right. So uh, many of the experiments at CERN have an open data policy, so which means that the uh, data that we record, uh, we release it openly. And so I work at the Atlas project, but the uh, data that we use uh, in the demo was from the CMS project, which is a project that's very similar to mine. And it kind of exemplifies that even uh, me, who is not a member of the CMS project, I can analyze this data from them because they released it openly. And in fact, anybody, uh, thanks to these cloud resources, anybody can do it. Uh, one of the challenges in open data for these large scale scientific collaborations is always that uh, the data, the scale of the data is very large. And while we can release it, it was always a bit of a question who can practically analyze it, who doesn't have a, a data center. And, and how large is very, is is practically large. So the data set that we analyzed yesterday in the span of a few minutes was 70 terabytes. 70 terabytes. It's not even practical for me to download that and try to store that at, exactly. at home on a laptop in a university. Exactly. But this can be found now in, in the cloud. Right, so we have it available at CERN, the open data, and then we transferred it because we have high-speed links to uh, the cloud providers. We transferred it into uh, Google Cloud Storage, and this is from where we read the data to analyze it. And now anybody could, in principle, do that. So a student, another university, another organization, anyone can work on that data without downloading it. Right. And where do you see this going next? Give us some idea of how uh, these these methods and, and Google Cloud can be used for, for your research. So I think what's uh, super exciting is that uh, this open data originally uh, oftentimes was uh, see seen as something uh, for outreach or educational purposes that you have uh, released small scale data sets. And, but now researchers are uh, starting to really uh, use it for uh, real scientific applications. Um, outside of the experiment. So people who have nothing to do with the Large Hadron Collider, they can analyze this data that we release openly. I think that is pretty exciting. Uh, cool, and what's, uh, what's your next project? So one thing that I uh, really want to try out in the cloud uh, ecosystem is functions as a service. So this is something that kind of fits uh, well onto uh, like our workload that we showed yesterday. And so we'll maybe uh, get back home and try that out. Yeah, cloud run, uh, K-native on top of Kubernetes. Huh? Exactly. Tell me a little bit about your next project. What are, what are you working on next and how do you see uh, using Google Cloud? So I think what was uh, pretty exciting is the release of uh, Cloud Run a couple of weeks ago. And um, so the workload that we showed yesterday during the demo actually uh, would fit nicely into this uh, functions as a service paradigm. And maybe when we get home, we'll try this out and uh, see whether or not we can run the demo in this way. Yeah, that's fascinating. I, I would imagine uh, those batch type services right. really match right. to, to the work that you're doing. Yeah, it's all the data transformations where, so the data that we download is in one format and then we uh, process it and uh, produce a summary format. And so this is essentially a function. Thank you, Lucas. I appreciate your time.